Hi, hi, and welcome to LNA Does Odious Stuff. One of the questions that I get most is how do I compress? How do I apply it? How, 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 how? And that's why I created this tutorial so that you can have some guidelines and how, how, and how. I also have a all about compression tutorial coming up soon in my channel. So please remember to subscribe so that you can actually see that and you also understand every single feature that the Ableton Live compression has to offer. <laughs> Why are we using it? So the purpose is to add presence as well as consistency into a signal. And that's why compression is almost this taboo that everybody's confused about because there's no clear right or wrong on how to use it. There's only science on how it works and there is a certain purposes that it could be used for. But finally, it's only about how you're going to apply it and your opinion on what is good. So these guidelines are there to help. These are not the right way to do it. It's just guidelines to help you to start understanding how you can start applying it. Got me? So what you can actually do is have the same track duplicate it. So I have the same snare here twice. I have color coded. So this one, the yellow is non-compressed and the blue one is a compressed track. So what you can do is go to compression, go to this little triangle here and go through these presets. So add one of these presets into the blue track. So then that track will be compressed. Okay, in this point, you're just practicing how to hear it, how to hear different compressions. Okay, so I have now created a very, very hard compression on this snare. So let's listen to the original one. So that's the snare. And let's now <laughs> listen to the compressed one. I'm laughing because it sounds really different. <laughs> So especially I was playing around with the attack and release and we're going to talk about those in a minute, but you can hear already it sounds so different. So what I will recommend for you is to firstly learn to listen what's different. And then after that, you go to the blue one and you freeze the track. Freeze, 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 freeze. And then you just flatten the track. And now you can physically see what has it done to the signal. So you see the original is very uh, loud in the beginning, it kind of decays there. Where you can see that the snare that I have compressed is very flat. So it's just basically almost same from the beginning to the end. So another way of for you to really listen and practice listening is turning it on and off. So if you don't want to duplicate it, so we can do this. Turn it on and off. Even if you don't know all the controls, you can just play around with them. So threshold ratio, attack, release, and knee. So example, I could just ch change one thing in this compression now. So short attack, long attack. If you really are determined to learn how to apply compression, Maybe concentrate one control a day and just see what does it actually do. Just learn really to listen. Don't know what that was. Second point, which is a threshold. So how do we know how to apply threshold? For this to be as accurate as possible, possible. I want to make sure that the snare is in zero decibels on the actual slider. And also I'm going to make this bit longer from here. Okay, so as you know, this fader here looks very similar as this fader here. So with threshold, we set the point where the compression will start. So anything above the threshold will be compressed. So if we're looking at this fader here, we need to set what signals do we want to compress. Let's have a look at analyze this green plug a little bit more, the jumpy plug. So the dynamic range between the loudest and the quietest is quite big. So where's the highest point of the signal? So it's between minus six and zero somewhere here. And the lowest one goes almost to minus 42. So, so now comes the hardest point of 
compression. So making decisions generally just really hard task anyway. We need to decide, are we going to just compress the peaks? So the loudest parts of the signal or the whole thingy. So the loudest and also the quietest. So example with snare, I would like to have the, uh, not only the peak, so I would like to also have the decay from the, the, the aftermath of it. So what I could do is first go between, so about minus 24 threshold. Everything above 24 will be compressed. Also, I'm going to take the makeup gain off in this point because it can actually change your judgment of the compression because you will think then that the signal will become louder. So we're going to first want to make it quieter and then we want to make it louder. Another way, we're going to go to the third view in the, our compression here. So you can see the volume represented as a little graph. So a good rule of thumb of what you can do if you don't know how to apply threshold, you come to this graph and you look at this and you look at where is the middle point between the loudest and the quietest part of the signal. And if you put the threshold about the between of those points, that usually does something. You're actually applying compression. You will make sure that you actually are doing something with the compression. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. So then we have ratio. Okay, how do we want to apply ratio? So as you know, ratio is sets the amount of gain reduction that is happening over the threshold. So if we have the threshold now as minus 24, so minus 24, and we look at the signal that is coming in, all that signal that is going above the threshold will be compressed and ratio determines how much is it being uh, compressed. So how much gain reduction is being applied to the signals going over the minus 24 threshold. So if we put it example two to one, for every single two decibels going over the threshold, we only get back one decibel. If you are confused about all these functions, again, I'm going to link down below videos that I have created where I explain these functions and what they mean a little bit better. How do you know how much uh, ratio? So firstly, you need to have the thought process thinking, okay, what's going on? What's happening above the threshold? So example, this is a snare. So it's just the peak really that is going on above the threshold right now. So if you want to aim only for the peaks, you can have a lower threshold just below the peaks and higher ratio. If you want to aim for certain consistency for the whole signal, you could have lower threshold and smaller ratio. Yeah. So let's see the difference between that. So this one here has a lower threshold. So you can see that there's a certain amount of more consistency between the peak and the this end here. So it's kind of longer. This signal here had a higher threshold, but much higher ratio. So you can see that this area, so the peak is basically flattened. But the quieter bit, which is the kind of the decay of the snare, a bit shorter. So this area has not really been affected as much as this area. This is a good way for you to figure out what you want, is that you can do both. So attack and release, are, it's like on and off button for compression. So how fast is the compression starting to work from the threshold? Uh, and how fast is it returning? Basically, I always demonstrate it like this. So if you think that this is compression, so fast attack and slow release would be fast attack, slow release, fast attack, slow release, slow attack, fast release, slow attack, fast release. You can listen to the signal, do this, think about how would you like the compression to work with your signal? So let's see what's, what is it actually doing? We duplicate it again. So the blue one is with the slower attack and the yellow one is with the fast attack. What's the massive difference is that actually this yellow one with the fast attack is really flat. So we are basically flattening the peak and making the signal more consistent. This one with the blue one where we have a slower attack, it actually kind of skips over the transient and then starts working around this area. So if you are not again sure what attack and release do, then please 
do exactly this. So to create two different versions where the other one is slow, other one is fast, and then freeze the tracks and see what's actually happened to the track. So the next thing we have is knee. You can see it here. So this is knee. So knee is how fast is the compressor responding, what closer it does come to towards the threshold. So hard knee is almost like when you put it in zero, you can see that the, in the threshold is very steep, like, like this, like a proper angle. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, like this ankle. Then if we put it higher, you can see that it's very, like a more of a, a curvy situation. If we compare it here, it doesn't show that different shape. Again, you need to learn to listen to it. <laughs> so this is very compressed signal. So hard knee. Soft knee. Personally, I like using the hard knee for sample percussion, uh, snare, you know, like snare, kick, um, whereas I would like to use softer knee, vocal, synths, but again, depends, 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 depends. Okay, so as an extra thing, I just want to show you how I uh, do the makeup gain. Personally, I don't use the auto makeup gain with Ableton Live compression at all. I find that it makes everything way too loud. And again, the purpose of compression is to not make things loud, is to make them compressed. And hopefully you kind of got that from this part. <laughs> so I take off the makeup gain. So what I can do is just look at where the threshold signal is, that this output gain lifted so much that it's about the same. I've also heard like a rule of thumb that you put output gain as much as, so example, if this is for 4.5, you lift this 4.5 and it's, it's actually always like relatively accurate. It's not like a real rule, but it's a guideline. <laughs> follow it if you have no idea how much to add makeup game. So if I do that now, example 4.5, it's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> and then if I want to just make sure that the input and output are about the same, I can just turn this on and off to check that. So this is not compressed signal, compressed signal. So that is to do with gain staging and making sure that your mix is not going to be peaking, that your levels are just nice and beautiful and uh, your compressed signals are doing their job. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video, but I really hope that this helped you and answered some questions that you might have, have had. Had, had. And please subscribe to this channel, please hit the bell icon and please come back when I'm actually doing all about compression video which should be coming out soon. Yes, see you soon. See you next Sunday. Bye!